Hello viewers, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is uh, what is uh, skeletal dysplasia. Uh, but before starting, I would like to request you to like, subscribe, and share these videos uh, to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com, you know. Now, I'll come to the topic, what is uh, skeletal dysplasia, you know. You know, a skeletal dysplasia is uh, a medical term. It's used for what uh, many people refer to as uh, dwarfism, you know. And, uh, you know, it's an uh, kind of uh, umbrella term, you know, uh, that includes uh, hundreds of conditions that can affect your child's uh, bone and uh, cartilage growth, you know. And... Uh, the types of the skeletal dysplasia are generally classified by which part of the skeleton a skeleton are uh, involved, you know. And if your child uh, is born with uh, this condition, you know, or the skeletal dysplasia, they will also uh, have the abnormal differences in the size and the shape of their legs, arms, trunk and skull, you know. And, uh, and they may be very short in stature, you know. And uh, they may also have <clears throat> like arms and legs that are uh, in uh, normal uh, proportion, you know. They, they, are, they are not in uh, uh, normal proportion, you know, uh, with the rest of their body, you know. And uh, the skeletal dysplasia is a like genetic condition. And it is caused by defect in a specific gene, which is known as... Uh, 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 a genetic mutation, you know. So each type of the skeletal dysplasia is relatively rare, you know. But as a whole, uh, it affects close to uh, one in five thousand uh, births, you know. Okay. Now, the next thing is, what are the symptoms? of the skeletal dysplasia, you know. You know, the specific symptoms uh, vary depending on the disorder that your child has, you know. And uh, their arms, their legs, their trunk, or the skull will likely develop with an unusual shape, you know. An unusual size, or maybe both, you know. And other symptoms may include like uh, uh, missing limbs or uh, stubby fingers, uh, duplication of the fingers or the toes, you know, club feet maybe, uh, missing ribs or the fractured bones, you know, or maybe joint pain or maybe uh, uh, scoliosis or maybe developmental delays, you know, and uh, maybe uh, kind of uh, cognitive impairments okay or uh, which was previously known as uh, a mental retardation you know now then what are the causes you know as i said earlier it, this is an inherited condition and it can uh, be caused by the different types of the genetic mutations you know uh, which are passed down from the parents to the child and these mutations can uh, prevent your child's bones uh, from growing normal, you know. And uh, the skeletal dysplasia runs in families and you can potentially pass to your children, you know, even if you don't know or, and, uh, and the family history of it, you know. And uh, the exact genetic defect uh, responsible for your child's skeletal dysplasia may be difficult to pinpoint, you know. And uh, the most common types of the skel uh, this uh, skeletal dysplasia uh, are uh, like uh, achondroplasia, you know, 
and uh, it's caused by the mutations of your child's F G F R three gene, you know. And most of the time, the parents of the child born with this uh, achondroplasia have normal height and stature, you know. Okay. And other common types uh, uh, include like uh, uh, thanatrophic, uh, like uh, dysplasia, you know, or uh, this is a condition that causes your child to develop extremely short limbs, uh, extra folds of the skin in their arms, in the legs, and uh, underdeveloped lungs, you know. And other type is hypo. Uh, in this condition, uh, it affects the uh, conversion of the cartilage into bone in your child's body and results in short arms and legs as well as the hands and feet that are short and uh, like uh, uh, broad, you know. And the other thing is, uh, uh, the other type is uh, uh, campomelic dysplasia, you know. Uh, it's a dangerous one and it's mostly it's fatal condition in the newborns that cause the dangerous bowings of the long bones in the child's legs and often in their arms as well, you know. And other type in the osteogenesis imperfecta. And uh, this is another type, you know, where the, there are fragile bones. And uh, another one is... Uh, achondrogenesis, you know. Uh, this is a condition which causes your child to develop short limbs and uh, small body, you know. And the next thing is, uh, how do doctors diagnose? Well, if your child has the skeletal dysplasia, they may be born with the short stature. And in other cases, they may be born with the normal stature and fail to grow in later time, you know. And you or your child's uh, doctor might discover their condition if your child's head grows out of proportion to the rest of the body, you know. And to diagnose, uh, uh, your uh, doctor may first conduct a physical examination, ask the questions about the, um, uh, any other problems, you know. And he will measure the child's height, child's weight and uh, uh, circumference of head, you know. And they will probably measure the lower and the upper segments of your child's body separately to uh, assess their proportions, you know. And they may also ask you to question about your child's family or medical history, you know. And your doctor uh, may use x-rays, may use uh, MRIs, or maybe CT scans to help to identify and assess the deformities in your uh, child's bones, you know. And in some cases, uh, they may even diagnose the skeletal dysplasia before your child is born, you know, uh, using an ultrasound examination. So your doctor will likely uh, conduct a routine ultrasound during your pregnancy and uh, uh, your partner's uh, or your partner's pregnancy, you know. So uh, during that exam, um, they may notice abnormalities in the uh, developing uh, child's like bone abnormalities or the bone structures, you know or the limb lengths, you know. And they may uh, uh, order more detailed uh, follow-up ultrasounds to help to diagnose their condition, you know. And uh, the exact type of dysplasia may, maybe it will be difficult to diagnose until your child is born, you know. And uh, your doctor may recommend the genetic and the molecular analysis to help uh, identify the type of the skeletal dysplasia that can your child have, you know. So this can help to identify the exact genetic mutations that are causing the condition. Now, the treatment options, you know. You know, your doctor may work with the team of specialists to uh, develop and to deliver the treatment plan, you know. And the example is like those uh, specialists may include neurosurgeons, maybe neurologists, maybe endocrinologists, radiologists, 
um, and uh, doctors who specialize in the genetics, you know, are uh, the physical therapist and occupational therapist and others, you know. So there will be a team of doctors, you know, the medical professionals who will be involved, you know. And uh, your child doctor may prescribe growth hormones uh, to help to boost the growth, you know. And uh, this type of treatment involves injections with uh, needles every day. Okay. And it may help to increase uh, your child's height, but uh, they will probably still develop below average uh, uh, stature, you know, even with the treatment. And uh, your doctor may also recommend the surgery, for example, uh, if your child's bones are uh, constricting their spinal cord or the brain stem, you know, or maybe the pediatric neurosurgeon may need to remove some bones, you know. And uh, the surgery may also be used to help to uh, lengthen your child's limbs and uh, induce the bone growth, you know, which uh, is known as limb lengthening, you know. And, but there are many possible complications involved in this type of surgery. And uh, it may involve multiple procedures and uh, long recovery periods, you know. So the doctor may also recommend uh, other treatments and rehabilitation therapies to help to relieve their symptoms and uh, to um, like improve the quality of life, you know, okay. And, uh, you know, the next thing is about the outlook, you know, long-term outlook, you know. You know, the long-term outlook uh, will depend on the type of the dysplasia. And, uh, you know, about half of the fetuses with the skeletal dysplasia are still born or they die shortly after birth, you know. And some children with the condition survive to into childhood, you know. And others survive into adulthood, you know. And many of them live relatively normal lives. And ask your doctor if you have any questions about your child's health, you know. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Thank you and goodbye.